Hello, welcome to my AP World History Main Concepts video. I'm Alexis Camarena and let's get started. So, the three main concepts consist of culture exchange, which is the sharing of cultural information between two or more individuals for the purpose of building relationships and also to enhance their own knowledge of their own culture and another culture. Uh, then we have cross-region exchange, which is the sharing of any type of information or items between different regions. Uh, each region has their own specific types of resources that another region might ha might not have. So this is where the exchange gets really important to diversify the different regions. Now, cross-cultural exchange is basically cultural exchange, the sharing of cultural information between individuals of different cultures. Um, but this cons is consistent with a global scope, which is very important. So we're going to go into the top five of each one, starting off with culture exchange. We have the Mongol Empire. So spanning from 1206 to 1368, this was one of the greatest empires, one of the largest empires in the recorded history. And it's a great example of culture exchange because as it was spreading throughout Asia and Eastern Europe, it was one in one entity, basically. And it brought in so many people of different cultures and this, all those cultures created one single culture and so of course later on it collapsed and it split into four distinct empires so we have the chinese central asian middle east and the russian one and i'll show you right here we have the big empire that was um spreading out throughout this big area and this was all the same culture and when it got to its final form right here we see four distinct empires but um they all had the same culture at the beginning. Throughout time, that culture changed into four distinct cultures, and this is why we see so much diversity of culture in this area in the present day. So, now we're gonna move on to the Trans-Saharan trade routes from the 8th to 17th century, uh, northwestern uh, region of Africa became a hotspot for trading. So, they did trade gold and salt and all that stuff, but there was a lot of cultural diffusion. Um, we see Arab versions spreading the Quran, the Middle Eastern Bible. Uh, they also introduced Islam and the written Arabic language to Western Africa. Uh, Muslim merchants also further spread Islam throughout Northern Africa and vice versa the African colonies shared their own culture of pottery and the use of the camel which really helped the trade routes to further advance. So here in this yellow area we see the hot spot of trading. This is where most of the big trading happened and we see we come from Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia all the way to the northwestern and western regions of Africa. So the Silk Road, really important. Um, this really allowed uh, the cultures to spread throughout Asia and Europe. Um, we see the trade of Chinese silk, Byzantine gold, Indian spices, uh, but it did also help them spread their systems of government, music styles, language, religion, art, and this really shaped the society's community of the world because we see so much diversity of culture in this area as well. Just like in the last one, this is why this whole area, this eastern side of the world is so culturally diverse. So now let's move on to the Crusades. Um, so Pope Urban II called for all the Christians to unite and fight the Muslims to regain control of the Holy Lands, right? So Muslims believe they, they belong to the Holy Lands, but the Christians believe they belong to the Holy Lands. Uh, the Muslims were settled at the Holy Lands at this time. So um, after four crusades of the Christians trying to reclaim the Holy Lands, uh, the Christians lost their battle, but they did learn a lot from the Muslims. They learned different ways to build and sell ships and how to use magnetic compasses. They were introduced to many trade goods while the crusades. So silk, cotton, spices, and art and literature so this is all cultural stuff and by increasing the interactions with the islamic world the christians opened up the door of culture exchange they were able to the, the islamics actually were able to advance in math from some of the stuff the christians introduced to them and the christians actually um translated some of the arabic um, work into latin so they could understand and enhance their own knowledge so this was a really important culture exchange because we saw the interaction of two different uh, two different religions, but in the end, they learned so much from each other. 
So now we're going to move to the U.S. Soviet exchange. So during the 1950s, there's a series of cultural exchange programs between the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, one of the main reasons for this exchange was because the two nations were trying to like bring each other together and create some type of peace. And so here we have a quote from one of the Soviet uh, leaders, for our Koslov, hopefully I said that right. He says, we are confident that the Soviet exhibition in New York, as well as the American exhibition in Moscow, will promote better understanding between our peoples, the development of friendly relations between the Soviet Union and the United States, and consequently the consolidation of peace throughout the world. So, because of this, we see so much cultural exchange between students, political figures, soldiers, and anyone curious. In the present day, we have study abroad, which is basically students in college being able to travel the world to different regions of the world and basically study what they want to study, but also be enveloped in the culture of another region of the world, which is very important. It really opens the eyes for everyone. So now we're going to move on to cross-regional exchange. So we see the Silk Road again. Why? Because not only was there a lot of cultural exchange but we saw a bunch of regional exchange so we go from china india all these north africa afghanistan pakistan tibet all these places we see the trade of rice cotton wool silk fabric skin furs uh bark cattle slaves this was all stuff specific to different regions so this is why the silk road also applies to cross region exchange so um, these tra these were traded for items found only in regions beyond their own, right? When one region doesn't have something, they go to another region. Now, the Atlantic sl slave trade was also another example. So during the 16th to 19th century, the East and West nations, so like the Americas and all the European areas, uh, they created uh, trade routes for slaves, right? And among these routes were traded slaves based on their ability and prices. You know, some slaves in Africa, Europe, had different abilities than some in uh, America. So that's why Americans needed the African slaves because of their abilities. But they didn't have any in America, so that's why they traded, right? And they developed some type of trade method where they traded slaves, at, like they used slaves as money basically, so they traded items for slaves and I don't know why that's highlighted okay uh, now we're gonna move on to the world war alliances so during the world wars uh, there's a lot of alliances and enemies so especially in the world war one and world war two the alliances made a enormous impact on the results of the war so these exchanges began with alliances so when one region was like, hey, bro, can you help me out? The other region was like, well, what's in it for me? You know, they exchanged items. So um, one nation might not have tanks and submarines and another nation might not have troops. So they would exchange troops for armory, basically. So you see weapons, troops and information. And even the alliance itself is an exchange. You know, they're exchanging trust with each other. So that in itself is a cross region exchange so an example is during world war ii when the aid of the united states in the allied powers this really allowed for the defeat of japan and soon the rest of the axis powers you know united states traded trust you know this sense of trust was basically the basis of the exchange so the colombian exchanges also counts as a cross region exchange um and the reason for this was because uh, Europe went to the Americas and then brought back stuff from the Americas. We saw so much traded and in in this process they were able to bring industrial area, uh, industrial tools and all that stuff to build up a civilization in the Americas. So that's like the regional exchange. The Americas didn't have all these industrial tools and stuff. And then Europe didn't have all the different um, resources from the america so this region exchange really brought together these two years and we're gonna go more into this later on but for now we're gonna move on so the indian ocean trade this between the 880 to 1500 trade intensified between africa and asia and this really allowed for like new city states to emerge in africa 
And so they traded with kingdoms like Great Zimbabwe to obtain gold, ivory, and iron. So this stuff is all regional to uh, the Asian African. So this was an African um, kingdom. And this had gold, ivory, and iron, which Asia didn't have. So when they traded, things were sold to like India, Asia, China, and this was all profitable, right? And then East African cities like Africa was also buying uh, buying stuff from Asia because the African areas didn't have some stuff that the Asians did have. So they would change and, you know, vice versa. They would make profit out of this. And then this created centers such like the malls here in, in the present because Asians decided to settle down in Africa and Africans decided to settle down in Asia so they could make a big profit and make a living. And so it was like the malls here, the manner of trade in this uh, Indian Ocean trade, it really influenced how the trade in the future works. So here we can see the big scope of all this trade. Right here we see November through February, trade would go this way because India and all these other areas, they had specific things, you know, in the winter, we don't have watermelons, right? So we would get watermelons going from over here to over here during the winter. But during the April, September area, we would have things that they wouldn't have during this area, this time period. So this is how trade would work. It's really profitable. So, Columbian Exchange. This is, we just got back to, we, we were just here and now we're back. So, uh, this was really powerful because of all the for the world. When they were exchanging uh, things between Europe and America, we saw a bunch of cultural exchange as well. So, here we can see turkey, squash, pineapple, avocado, service, all this stuff. This is food, cultural food, right? They didn't have any of this, any of these uh, resources. So now they get all the culture from the Americas, they get the cultural food, and now they could expand and diversify their own food. And same thing here, they brought stuff over here, livestock, grains, we didn't have all this stuff. And then now over here in the Americas, we use all this stuff to build up our own society uh, diversify our food, like I said before. But also, we we saw uh, diseases to come over here, and that really impacted Americas because we didn't we didn't have these, so we didn't have any protection against them, and it really killed a lot of people. So that that's one side effect to the uh, Colum Colombian exchange. So now we're gonna move on to colonialism, and although this is a uh, not the best event in history uh, it is an example of cross-cultural exchange because when a new area is being colonized it's being brought new traditions and culture from another group of people um, and it doesn't even stop there because when one country settles down in an area more people are going to come in and that really diversifies the country you see we have a bunch of cultures from other immigrants and from other countries right so when the Americas were colonized by the European nations they brought all their culture with them and although this was forced, the Americas soon became a landfill of different cultures. So the the Americas, the United States that we see today, wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all this cultural exchange, all this diversity, all this diversity that we have in the United States. It's because of these reasons right here. Now, spread of Christianity. Throughout the time of the Roman Empire, uh, Christianity was being spread, and a man named Paul was able to travel 10,000 miles visiting synagogues, big cities, and even people's homes to preach about Christianity. And because there's no conflicts during this time, Christians were able to spread and walk around freely roam the empire. So this is why this man, Paul, was able to travel these many miles to spread Christianity. And this was directly to Jews, basically. But soon non-Jews liked the culture and they wanted to get into it. And the Christians decided, well, why not? Let's just bring them in. So this really spread Christianity beyond their main target of people. And so the Jews decided to share their own culture too, which affected the Christian culture and the Christian religion. So they worked around this and so Christianity de developed new practices and stuff. And this really helped build up the religion. Uh, it was able to spread across the majority of Europe, western part of the Middle East, and a small portion of Northern Africa. So this is why we see the cross-cultural exchange, because it was beyond just 
the area of uh, Europe and all that, you know? So, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so my video cut out, but we're back here. So, uh, we see all this cross cultural exchange. You see, we went from these areas all the way to Spain, you know? From Arabia all the way to Spain, Africa, a little bit of Britain. All this, this is so diversely affected, you know? We see Christianity in all these parts, and soon it spread out to all the Americas and all that. Today, in the modern world, we see Christianity in all parts of the world, and this was the beginning of it all. So, you see how it goes a long way after a good amount of time. So, now the Silk Road again, right? I said the Silk Road is important, and because beyond regional exchange, it brought light to many cultural exchanges, cross cultural. Because the cultural exchanges were in its own area, like in China, in those areas we saw cultural exchange. But now let's talk about the cross cultural exchange where it went into different areas of the world. So we saw the introduction of Buddhism into China, you know? We saw Christianity reach Central Asia and China. The Arabian Caliphates brought Islam to the Silk Road in exchange for information and new technologies. Silk weaving was taught to those in Central Asia and vice versa the art of glass making was taught to those in china so we've seen exchange of so many cultures and ideas between different areas we see exchanges between china and asia we see exchanges between arabia the arabian countries i mean uh, and, and central asia you know um and we see the same thing with applied art architecture all this stuff was exchanged between the countries of the West and the East, right? So this is why the Silk Road was really important to the world. I'm gonna show you a map. So you see a Silk Road spreading from China to India, to Persia, to Arabia, Europe, Egypt, Somalia, Java, all these different countries, cities, countries, towns, everywhere, we see a trade of culture. We see all their cultural food spread over here. Their cultural food spread all the way over here. This was really important because the Silk Road was primarily in the Asian China area, right? And then it somehow got all the way to Europe, Africa, right? So this just shows, shows how one culture can spread out to one area and then that branches down to one, two, and then three, four, five, six, seven areas. And all this culture is being spread and exchanged. That's the important part to remember. It's being exchanged, right? So they gave a little something and they gave a little something back. And this is how we, the diversity of cultures is spread. So now slave trade again. And it was very cruel, but it did act as a cross culture exchange. Why? Because the slaves were being brought to and from East and West nations, right? From Europe, Africa to the Americas, right? And when they came to these new areas, they adapted new ways of life in order to survive, but they never forgot their own ways of life. They, they brought their culture and they were able to spread it. In the present day, we have an abundance of proud African-American individuals, and some of them are descendants of these slaves during the slave trade. So if it wasn't for this exchange of slaves, the trade between the slaves, we wouldn't have so much diversity. And all, it was very cruel and not justified, but we do see a lot of culture from these people in all parts of the world, you know? And while the slave trade occurred, it's important because in this time, the Columbian Exchange also was occurring. During the Columbian Exchange, we saw a trade of slaves. So th this kind of hints to the similarity between all the different types of themes in the AP World History exam, right? Here we have the cultural exchange, cross-regional exchange, and the cross-cultural exchange, right? We see, they, what do they all have in common? They have the Silk Road in common because the Silk Road applies to each one of these exchanges, right? The Crusades and the spread of Christianity. As Christianity was spreading, 
the Crusades were also occurring, right? The Crusades occurred and they were able to spread Christianity into the Islamic world, right? So here we see the connection between the culture exchange and the cross culture exchange, right? Colonialism and the Colombian exchange, right? Connection between cross regional, connection between cross cultural. Why, why are these two connected? Because when Christopher Columbus came to the Americas, he colonized the Americas, right? And in that, he went back to Europe and brought what he found in the Americas back to Europe. That is what explains the Columbian exchange. That is what the Columbian exchange was, right? Slave trade. We see it, the slave trade here, the slave trade over here. Why? Because it was regional and cultural at the same time. We were bringing, bringing items from one specific region to another, and at the same time, those regional items were people bringing their culture from one area to another, right? So if we notice one thing, one thing that these all have in common is that they have something to do with the upbringing of the, of the modern world. If it wasn't for all these things, the diversity, the information, the technology, everything that we have in the present day, we wouldn't have. Everything would be completely different. This is why these three themes right here are so important to the AP World History exam because they explain how we came to be. So you could use this video to enhance your own knowledge, uh, build off. I explained the basic principles of each one of these, but there's so much more to them if you want to go beyond that. There's these smaller details, but the bases you could get, right? And then expand on that. This is really important for the AP World History exam. It's important to understand what's going to be on it, and this is what's going to be on it. These these themes right here is exactly what you need to know. So, thank you for watching my video. Um, I'll see you in the next one. And um, yeah, thanks.